radiation, fission, fusion, pile, radioactivity, neutron, gamma rays, solar power, transistor, automation. A new language has come into currency. To the public, it is a language of the future. To the scientist, a language of the present. This, then, is a report on our present future, some of it profound, some of it mere gadgetry. You are looking now at a nuclear reactor. It is not producing a bomb. It can produce electricity. From a pilot atomic power plant in the desert, the lights go on. Nuclear energy goes to work, not destroying, but serving mankind. The power lines of tomorrow may also derive their electricity from that source of all power, the sun. A highly significant step in this direction is the solar battery made from silicon, an element of sand. Sunlight falling on silicon strips is converted directly into usable electricity. Some scientists consider the sun a much more important potential source of power than the atom. They envision the day when electric power from the sun, solar energy they call it, will light cities, power radio and television transmitters, drive factory wheels, and turn deserts into lush green fertility. Along with the atom and the sun, the electron opens a major highway to this present future. In the electronics age, the development of giant computers, electronic brains, has been a key development. These incredibly complex machines are the mechanized geniuses of the 20th century. They store information. Their memory is infallible. This ability has started a second industrial revolution, automation, the highly controversial automatic factory. In this engine block assembly, thousands of precision operations are performed with electronic brain power replacing manpower. Only a token workforce is needed for maintenance and supervision. Without electronic control systems, no nation could defend itself in modern war. Here is a new and striking example, the Hughes Aircraft Company's Falcon, a guided missile with a brain capable of outwitting any enemy bomber. The missile is launched from one airplane to hit another in the air, as shown in this graphic representation. Once the target has been pointed out to it, the missile's electronic intelligence will steer it to that target no matter how the bomber maneuvers. Here is an actual shot of the Falcon destroying a drone plane. A major electronics development has been television for science as well as entertainment. Through TV, Los Alamos atomic scientists, a fifth of a mile away, control a critical assembly of fissionable materials. Television serves industry too. Here a camera outside a plant enables an operator inside to load scrap merely by watching his TV screen. In the laboratory, a television camera rigged up to a microscope allows a scientist to get a big screen picture of the highly magnified field without the usual squint into the eyepiece. In the field of medicine, electronics offer an increasingly useful tool, and television is playing an important role. A television camera in an operating room records a delicate operation. The surgeon, using a tiny microphone under his face mask, provides a running commentary. Brilliant close-ups of the entire surgery in full color 
are transmitted to doctors and students, perhaps in many cities, and medical knowledge is disseminated in a highly effective manner. Another example, a patient in Kansas is examined by his doctor under the new high-powered fluoroscope. The image is transmitted by closed-circuit television to a New York specialist, and the two doctors, thousands of miles apart, confer without the patient leaving his hometown. For entertainment television, magnetic videotape promises great things. Most people are familiar with sound recording on tape. This device records pictures on tape in full compatible color or in black and white, as well as the program sound. The magnetic tape is half an inch wide. It runs at 20 feet a second. A program can be recorded and played back at any time, immediately if desired, without any laboratory processing. In motion picture or video production, a director will be able to shoot a scene and play it back at once, right on the set. Someday, when Papa photographs Junior, he may use a small TV camera and electronic photography. His full color or black and white pictures will be recorded on a home video tape recorder. You play them back immediately, without any processing or development, through his regular television set. What do you wear to answer the phone? What difference does it make? None today. But tomorrow, if video phone comes, as well it might, then the world has found itself another problem. In another field, music can now be produced entirely by electronics. No known instruments are involved. Coded information is punched out. An electronic music synthesizer does the rest. This is music with a strictly electronic beat. This is a transistor. It is the tiny bombshell of the electronics revolution. What it does, simply stated, is to replace vacuum tubes in many applications. It is an essential of modern electronic circuitry. It has many advantages, small size for one, permitting miniaturization, making big things smaller. Things like pocket radios, wristwatch radios, and a coming attraction portable, battery-powered television sets. Since Edison's invention of 1879, science has continued to improve electric light. Remarkable advancements have come from the laboratories. A possibility for tomorrow is the house with cordless lamps. We know if you hold fluorescent tubes over a radio wave generator, they light up. How about a generator in the basement, lighting all the lamps in a house through unseen, unfelt radiations? And what of the kitchen of tomorrow? There are many interpretations. This is one. Push buttons open and close refrigerator doors. No stooping. Work surfaces can be brought up to a comfortable level. And no stretching, a wave of the hand brings cabinets gliding down for easy access. Another wave will send them gliding up again. An ice maker delivers cubes, crushed ice or ice water, singly or in combination. Menus and recipes are projected on color slides on a large screen. And there are other interesting possibilities ahead. Preserving food by gamma rays instead of refrigeration. Cooking meals in 60 seconds by radio frequency. Washing dishes with ultrasonic waves, to name a few.
Improved foodstuffs may be cooked in the kitchen of tomorrow. At Brookhaven National Laboratory, a botanist enters the gamma ray field. He cuts down radiation emanating from a central source by remote control. His radiation counter tells him it is now safe to enter. In this field, corn and other plants are grown under controlled radiation conditions. Corn is irradiated, studied. Atomic corn cross-pollinated with clean corn and the results analyzed. The aim is to develop a bigger, hardier, disease-free strain. It is an important project in the Atoms for Peace program. This man is starting to make a delivery for the atomic drug store in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. This is one pharmacy that carries no aspirins, soda mints, or cough drops. The merchandise is radioactive, which explains the ingenious methods of handling. The proprietor is the Atomic Energy Commission. These drugs and chemicals are known as radioisotopes, and at the end of the line, they will be shipped out of here in lead-shielded crates to doctors and research scientists in many parts of the world. The labels are strange. Radio iron, radio gold, radio phosphorus, radio iodide, radio strontium, radio yttrium. You measure them not by ounces or grams, but by millicuries. How many millions of atoms disintegrate within one second? They are helping to save thousands of lives every year, are advancing medical science as well as research in biology, industry, and agriculture. The most effective research tool since the invention of the microscope they hold great promise for the future. The apparatus of the atomic age is enormously ingenious. At Argonne National Laboratory in Chicago, metallurgists use a master slave manipulator to work with radioactive metals. This manipulator can do anything human hands can do. As you watch, the operator, shielded by three feet of glass and concrete, conducts an involved metal hardness test, relying entirely on his nimble mechanical fingers. In the final analysis, however, the key to the future is not an apparatus, a machine, or an electronic tube, but the brain power of man. Nothing will ever replace creative intelligence. In great laboratories, in colleges and universities, in solitary quiet, man thinks, reasons, experiments, creates. The mind strains to peer beyond today's horizons for a glimpse of the wonders of tomorrow. Thank you.